Every new professor, when they start their career, hopes that their work has an impact. And one of the things I'm proud of is not only making impact uh, with teaching and mentoring, as well as administration of academic programs, but in our research. If you ask me what is the biggest impact we've had in our research over the years, I'd have to say our creatine research. In 1993, we started research on creatine supplementation. We were the first ones in the United States to see if adding creatine to the diets of athletes would increase strength, muscle mass, and performance. And as a result of that research, creatine became a leading supplement given to power athletes to optimize performance and strength. And what we thought was just a sports supplement has now blossomed into something that can affect health from infancy all the way to elderly. So what is creatine? Creatine is an amino acid that is stored in the body and provides energy for explosive exercise. It's also important to provide energy when there's a lack of oxygen availability, like during stroke or ischemic heart disease or other type of diseases that limit oxygen availability. And creatine then provides essential energy necessary to meet the metabolic demands of the cell. For this reason, after doing research in athletes and finding that creatine generally increases strength and endurance and muscle power and muscle mass, researchers started to say, well, what would it happen if we gave creatine to people with certain diseases or age. And so since then, there's been a plethora of research on creatine and health. For example, creatine in pregnancy, third trimester, has been shown to reduce the incidence of blue baby asphyxiation and increase the survival rate in animals. And so we're now looking at creatine in the third trimester of pregnancy, much like folate, as a way to protect the child and mother. Uh, there are some kids that are born with creatine synthesis deficiencies and therefore have poor maturation and cognitive function and motor development. When identified early on and provided creatine in the diet, they then will have a normal progression uh, throughout their lifetime. We then have adolescents who are interested in building muscle and providing creatine and other strong, good nutritional practices can help prevent their interest in taking things like anabolic performance enhancing steroids. Uh, we also know that if an athlete takes creatine, they get bigger and stronger, they also recover from injury better. You say, well, okay, well, how does that affect me? As you get older, you have less creatine availability because we typically don't eat the type of foods that contain creatine, like meats and fish to a great degree, and we tend to have lower levels. Creatine supplementation in older individuals has been shown to help maintain muscle mass, so you don't lose your muscle mass as you age. It's been helped to promote more fat loss, so it helps body composition management. It's been shown to increase strength and endurance, so you can do functional activities much better. It's even been shown to affect cognitive function as you get older, so that you can perform and have less decline in cognitive uh, abilities. For disease states, if you're diabetic, creatine's been shown with training to improve insulin sensitivity and decrease the need to be concerned about some of the glucose management medication. If you have high cholesterol, creatine's been shown to help reduce cholesterol. If you have high homocysteine levels, an indicator of risk to heart disease, it's been shown to help reduce that and modulate that. Uh, there are other things that creatine's been do, uh, shown to do, for example, if you have antidepressant medications, there has been evidence showing that creatine availability will help improve the efficacy of those medications and even reduce interest in things like suicide rate. Uh, there's also fascinating research now on creatine in the immune system. There are some cells, T lymphocytes, that need creatine and under stressful situations like under virus load, etc., if it doesn't have enough creatine, the immune system can't respond as well. So we now think that there's a connection to immunity. Uh, there's also evidence that uh, creatine can affect uh, post-viral fatigue, chronic fatigue. And COVID, for example, is a situation where you get very chronic fatigue. And we think now that creatine may be a way to help people get back into training and back to normal activity and normal functional capacity and help people recover after that post-viral load. There are some cancers that are deprived of creatine and therefore providing more creatine in a cancer patient can slow the progression of the tumor. So as you can see, there's lots of areas that creatine can uh, provide benefit for individuals. 
So what we thought was just for athletes, this is an example how sport nutrition research has now transited to health and medicine. And literally, there are millions of people over the last 30 years who have benefited from creatine supplementation to improve health, fitness, and help them manage a number of diseases.